Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial. So we're literally just going to carry on from where we left off. Um, I'm going to carry on with the crouching system. Um, so let's go ahead and tidy it up a little bit. I'm actually going to go into SVR models and we're going to create a new serializable class. I'm going to create a new public class for player or we'll go character stance. Um, and we'll just make sure to include the serializable header uh, attribute. And we'll go ahead and create, uh, finish this class. So this class is going to be simple. So it's going to have a public float. Um, and this will be um, the camera height. And we'll also have a capsule collider. Um, and we'll set this to um, Collider. Um, actually, let's do Stance Collider. All right, so nice and clean. And then we'll go over to our character controller and we're just going to start using these variables instead of specifying each one. So we'll keep the camera height and the camera height velocity, um, but we're going to go ahead and change these. So I'm actually going to leave the variables there for now, just so I can copy and paste the values we got in the last episode. I'm going to go ahead and create a public, uh, the name of our new class, and I'm going to call this player stand stance. Um, and we're pretty much going to duplicate these uh, for each stance. Uh, so we'll have player stand, player crouch, and we'll have player prone. So we're going to Unity to copy and paste those values and then we can remove the previous three variables that we created. So you see we have each of our three stances here. So let's just bring across these values. So we have our camera stand height. So we'll pop that in the stand stance. Uh, that one was still zero and then prone was minus 0.58. So nice and simple and then we can just get rid of these three. So if we have a look at it now. Cool. All right, so that um, that's going to break this down here, um, but this is nice and easy to fix as well. Uh, of course, we're just going to use our player stands dance uh, dot camera height, and the exact same for down here, except with their respective ones. So this will be crouch, and this will be prone. Cool. All right, so the main thing we need to do is the collider. Um, so let's create a game object 3D and a cube. And say, for example, we want to be able to prone under this one and crouch under this one. So if I hit play with maximize open, you can see I can't go anywhere near it. Um, actually, let's not have maximize open. <laughs> I can't get under there and I definitely can't get under there. Actually, we'll just raise that prone one a little bit more. But then if I click on our player and let's change his player stance to crouch, you see I should be able to get under this one, but probably won't be able to get under this one. And then if we change that to prone, you can see we can get under that one and we can, I, th I think we can even lower it a little bit. So let's just lower that a teeny bit. Cool. All right. So that's the aim for uh, this this tutorial is to be able to prone under that one and crouch under that one. So it should be quite simple, right? <laughs> All right. So let's move on to our capsules. So this capsule that I prematurely added quite a while ago, um, we actually need to create more of these. So let me just open up gizmos and change the 3D icons a little bit smaller. It's taking up a lot of space. And I'm actually going to unlight my scene so that I can see the capsule a lot nicer. I don't know why it's gone all blue, but I like blue. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Unity doesn't like me. All right, so with the scene unlit, you see we can see our collider a lot better. So I can firstly see that our player is kind of going through the ground a little. So let's lift them up a little bit. Cool. All right, so these capture colliders, um, they're not going to be enabled. Um, they're basically just going to be used to house these variables for us. 
Um, so the main things we care about, the radius should always be the same. I'm going to change that to 0 0.3 actually. Uh, the radius should always be the same, but the height and center will be changing depending on whether we're crouched, uh, whether we're standing and whether we're prone. Um, so with this capsule collider, I'm just going to right click it um, and I'm going to copy, co copy component. Um, and then I'm just going to right click again and paste component as new. So you see, we've got another capture collider here. Um, I actually want to move these around, so you can just click and drag, um, or you used to be able to. Uh, click the three little meatballs and you can click move up and move down. Let's just move these next to each other. Uh, I'm going to move that down and I'm going to do the same thing again, Comp paste component as new. And let's move it with the others. Uh, so move up and move up. Of course you can, uh, the other way of doing this is just to um, change the capture collider to how you want it, save the values and a variable, but this way it makes it nice and easy to edit inside the editor. Um, and yeah, anything we can do to make our jobs easier later on, I think we should be doing. <laughs> so let's go ahead, our middle one is going to be the crouching one. Um, so let's change that height. So say for example, our crouch height will now be one. So you can see that's a lot smaller. Um, maybe even not one, maybe 1.3. Uh, that's not 0.3, 1.3. Or that might not be low enough. Uh, but of course we now need to change the Y so that the collider is on the ground. Um, so let's just change that to say minus 0.4. So that's too much. We'll just keep playing around until obviously the lines match up. Okay, that looks like 0 0.35. Um, and then we can actually move our player to see if that collider will now fit under our cube. So let's move him closer to the cubes um, and we'll just have a look. So by the looks of it, I will be able to fit under there. So that should be okay. Um, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hit play and we'll take a look um, where the camera actually goes. If I change, if I open up the character controller script here and change that to crouch, we can see that it kind of fits in line, um, but not, not as so if I stand. You can kind of see where we're basing our camera depending on the collider, so it's kind of where the radius begins. So that's a good indication. Um, we could even lower that a little bit. I think I think we can lower that a little bit. Um, so we'll, we'll change that a bit. And uh, so it was the middle capsule collider. Um, so the middle capsule collider, let's change the height to 1.2 instead. Um, and again, we'll just try to align that. So that's now minus 0 0.4. Try to stick to whole values because then you can get the uh, center spot on. Okay, so uh, then the next would be the prone. So I'm going to go ahead and enable it just so it stands out a little bit more. And say for example, let's change the height to 0 0.4 and you can see it pretty much turns into a sphere. Um, so actually let's try and adjust the height a little bit more. Um, that should be okay. Let's move our player um, so that he's actually inside where we want to be able to prone under. Um, just so we can get a better view. And then let's actually change this height until we're happy with it. So we'll go even a little bit more. Let's, uh, I mean, we can try it like that. Let's bring him down a little so you can see he can easily fit under there. Yeah, he can easily fit under there. So. Let's just try to get this value exact, so we'll change that to 0.8 and we'll try that at 0.6, which looks spot on. Um, Alright, so we'll leave that, make sure to disable it again. So let's close all three of these capture colliders. Uh, we now know that the top one, the middle one and the bottom one um, is the, the standing, the crouching and the proning. Uh, so now we basically just need to set these three values depending uh, We basically need to use those three any of these three values depending on uh, our player stance to set our character controllers uh, values so 
what we'll do first is inside our new stance classes that we made here. Uh, so we have our player, player stand stance. Let's make sure that we click and drag the right colliders into there. So let's just click and drag the component in. Just like that. There we go. So we now have uh, programmatic access to these three capture colliders to grab those values that we need. Uh, so, so far, so good. Let's go into our script and actually start playing around with these. Um, so like I said, there's one float that we're going to need to smooth. Um, and there is also one center that we need to smooth. Um, and the smoothing, the smoothing speed needs to be exactly the same. Um, otherwise you get some funny behavior. All right, so let's go ahead and begin with our capsules smoothing. Uh, so we'll create a private vector three so that we can smooth the center. So we'll call this capsule. Uh, actually, let's call this, um, yeah, capsule. Uh, let's call this stance capsule center. Um, and then we also need the exact same thing for the velocity. And then we'll also create um, another private uh, float for the height. So we'll have stance capsule height. Um, and again, we need a velocity on that as well. Okay, so it's going to be done in a very similar way. Um, so instead of getting a stance height here, we're actually going to get our current um, our current stance. So instead of calculate camera height, let's change this to calculate ca uh, calculate stance because this is um, not just about the camera height anymore. Um, so instead of uh, getting our stance height here, uh, let's just call this current stance. Um, and we'll set our current stance to our player stand stance. And then instead of setting the camera heights here, we literally just set the stances. And then by the time we get down here, we already know the current stance. Uh, so we'll say, instead of just using that variable we had created stance height, we can do current stance dot camera height. Okay, so now that we have the camera height here. Let's carry on with the rest of our capsule. Uh, so we can actually just do character controller um, dot height equals uh, math f dot smooth damp. And then, so what we want to smooth damp this height to. So we'll have the height um, and we'll smooth damp it to um, our current stance um, dot stance collider um, and then here we can get everything that we need so here we have our height and then it requires the velocity which we did create up here um, so it's this stance capsule height velocity so we need to create a reference to that just like the rest of our smooth temps. Um, and we're still going to use our player stance smoothing. Cool, nice and simple. Uh, we're then going to do the same for the center. And this is going to be a vector three instead. So vector three dot smooth temp. So you see there's a lot of smoothing going on, uh, but it's very important for the player controller because obviously we need to create that nice smooth feeling. Yeah, so smooth damp, we want to smooth the center to our current stance. Dot stance collider dot center. And then we'll ref our character, oh, not our character controller dot center. Um, the variable we created up here to house the velocity, stance capsule center velocity. So we'll reference that. And then again, we just use player stance smoothing. All right, so I want to say that this is now just going to work, um, but I kind of winged this. 
Um, I haven't usually done it like this in the past. Uh, so <laughs> let's just see how this works. Um, I'm going to, I don't want to programmatically do this. Let's change the radius inside our character controller to 0.3. So that it matches our capsules. All right, let's give this a go. I'm going to hit play. And we'll go to our player and let's change his stance to crouch. Cool. All right, that worked. Wow. <laughs> I'm actually impressed. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be because it's my own code. Um, okay, so that works. It's a little bit funny when we hit there, um, but we can tidy that up a little later on. Um, so obviously we can't go under here. Um, and let's change that to now. Let's change that to prone. We'll see if we can get under there. So we still can't get under there. You might might be questioning why. Um, oh, actually, I don't think we fit under there. Okay, never mind that. That makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have to play with our capsule collider here. Uh, so let's change his height. Uh, wait, no, sorry. Which which capture collider is it? It is that one. Yeah. Okay. So the height is 0.8. Let's lower it a little bit. Uh, so we'll set the height to say 0.4 or something. If we set it to 0.4, okay, we could definitely get under there with 0.4. So now it looks like something out of Star Wars. Is that too small? I don't know whether that's too low to be able to prone under. Maybe let's just lift that a little bit. I'm gonna come out of play. Um, and lift that a little bit. I feel like that's too low. Obviously we can make it work, but I don't feel we should. Um, let me just set the player stance to prone and go back in. All right, so we're prone. Can I get under there? Okay, yeah, I think to be fair, I think that's fine. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. All right, so I think that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, we managed to get the starters working, which is good. Um, there is obviously uh, a bug that you can probably see coming up in the future, whereas if we uh, crouch under this and then stand up, we'll just go right through it. So in the next episode, we're going to add those checks to make sure that we can stand uh, or can crouch from prone, uh, those kind of checks. Um, and what we're also going to do is we're also going to finish up our input so that we can actually hit stuff on the keyboard instead of having to <laughs> use the inspector. Alright, so thank you for watching. If you get stuck, just join the Discord and let me know.